Hello and welcome everybody. Good <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you for joining. Hi uh, everybody on the uh, on the recording, I guess, uh, if you watch this late, but now uh, live. Thank you for joining live. Uh, it's cool. Uh, thank you um, to Diogo uh, and welcome. Hi. How is, how yeah, is it? Hi. Uh, thanks for having me here, uh, first of all. Uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to to be here and uh, yeah let's uh, let's talk about stuff <laughs> let's talk about stuff that sounds good let's uh, let's talk about stuff before we talk about uh, uh, one kind of stuff let's talk about i'd like to talk about some some other stuff that, that that's happening so um we have um i don't know if you if you all uh, are aware of this but uh but we have uh, a thing coming up and i think the, the banner at the bottom of the uh, of the screen indicated it a little bit uh, it's notes um, time so uh, I'd like to spend a, a second or two on uh, on notes so um, this is our developer and data scientists uh, conference taking place in um, November online and it's it's free it's a virtual event and the fun thing about this is it's going to be live uh, 24 hours almost so you can join wherever you are um, uh, located and you will see something uh, in in your in your daytime basically that's interesting that's relevant that's fun and exciting and you don't have to stay up late or get up early to 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 watch uh, the sessions uh, and obviously every everything will be uh, will be available for you so I think that's going to be cool and fun um, I'm I'm looking forward to that and um, yeah I just I just wanted to mention this uh, again registrations are open and uh, please register if you haven't um, yeah. But now, Neo4j Live is is the the topic. So uh, Ethereum Network Explorer uh, visualizing visual, visualizing addresses interactions with Diogo Viana. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to uh, to have you here today, Diogo. It's it's really cool. It's a, it's an interesting topic. Um, before we dive into the topic itself, maybe uh, Diogo, you want to say a few words about who you are, what you do, and uh, why. Um, why you discovered the world of graphs and what what uh, had you had you come to it and what what made you stick to it i guess yeah sure so first of all uh i'm from portugal uh i studied uh, software engineering here and i just jumping forward i discovered graph world and neo4j when i was actually in college uh, it was a subject at the time so <laughs> jumping Ooh, to, to that part, um <laughs> I'm now a full stack uh, developer uh, at Finium. Uh, we are um, a small team of consultancy. We work mostly um, in fin fintech uh, projects, but in the, um, the late last year from now, we've been moving and uh, working uh, in Web3 products. Uh, so I can talk, reference some, but uh, not sure if uh, they are. Um, important to to now but we we work mostly with uh, with with the financial things uh, in the sense of either web 2 or web 3 project and uh, okay. yeah about graphs i, I discovered uh, neo 4 j uh, at college because we studied that at the time uh, to be honest i really enjoyed it because of the, the visual part uh, mm -hmm. in the sense of uh, actually using it uh, but in the sense of graphs uh, themselves i always like them um, one of my specialties on my master's degrees was distributed systems so we studied a lot of uh, graph algorithms uh, my uh, my thesis part of it the core part was also involving graphs so i've always enjoyed them in no way very cool that, that, that's very nice and i think we have a couple of uh uh of uh, of um, watchers from portugal uh, tony i, I think yeah. hola <laughs> hola hola tony exactly uh, thank you for joining hi mark uh thank you for joining uh, as well um yeah it's cool um we we'd like to keep this open usually so this is more a conversational more of a uh less of a presentation than uh, more of a interactivity uh so if you have questions if you uh, if you have any points uh, you'd like us to explore a little more some comments some feedback please uh, type it in chat uh i'll try to have a look out for it and 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 uh, you know slot it in if possible uh, and so we can uh, we can discuss a few points um 
and uh, yeah, it's cool. No, I think um, with uh, learning it at a university or getting it, getting getting an interest in university, um, uh, you know, background is is pretty cool and and is I think it's very fun and. I think the, the visual aspect you just described is, is is one of the main the main points where I see for many many people uh, that that we have uh, they see it they understand it they can totally totally take it exactly. and adopt it to their own um, use cases or their own challenges and data problems. So uh, I think that helps a lot. That makes it very very uh, approachable, e even. Even if you uh, you do complex things, the first step is, is is somewhat easy. It gets complex, obviously, and it is powerful and, and and more difficult than that. But the first point of understanding it is really cool. And yeah, yeah, totally agree. Uh, I'll I'll talk about that also, but because it was one of the reasons to actually also use Neo4j in this project because uh, the way it's easy to actually uh, visualize data and get conclusions out of it without uh, that big of an asshole. Uh, so yeah, uh, not sure if you have any more questions uh, or I should start sharing. No, you can uh, you can, you can can start sharing your screen. Uh, Tony agrees. Um, it's uh, uh, overwhelming uh, a little bit. Yes, maybe uh, it can be overwhelming. It depends on the, on, on the size, but you know, if, if you start with something small, something where you know the data where you know the problem a little bit more where you have a bit more of of a of an understanding of it all then you have you, you can carve out your own little little corner maybe and, and and import the data do some queries run it and understand the first steps basically how it works and then from there you 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 um you can expand and adopt and, and and learn learn more basically and uh, and have it have a, have a challenge uh, the the next step and the bigger the bigger problems but i think yeah it, it i i understand it's 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 sometimes overwhelming especially with something new and then um you see it and then it's it's, it's some some of the, the the people are very very advanced and they do it very very quickly and then you think oh whoa, what's going on here yeah, <laughs> yeah. and at the time we basically we st we studied we started with sqls sql stuff and then the assignment was just now move everything from SQL to Neo4j, and we, uh, <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> yeah. That, that needs some some rewiring up there. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, right. I'll, I'll present my my screen. Yeah, just a sec. Okay, should okay. be now. Okay. So yeah, as as you already presented, this is the title of today's talk. Uh, so I'll just advance this to the next thing. Uh, so also, who am I? We are already talked about it, but just leaving some links to Twitter or GitHub if you want to to reach out. Also, uh, Twitter and GitHub for Finium. Uh, we also post some cool things there, and our blog. We usually write about. Uh, a very broad uh, subject, not just what we actually work on a client's project, but also things that we actually work on on our uh, investment time side uh, to the client's project. So maybe you have there something that you, you would like to see. Um, so yeah, a small overview. Um, so we have I have slides, uh, but feel free to uh, reach out. Um, Make a leave a comment if you have any any doubts, uh, Alexander. You also. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll just make a small intro to Ethereum and why and how it works in the sense of being having public data uh, on the blockchain. Uh, what is a network explorer and why we are actually uh, playing with this and trying it? Um, brief analysis to the project and then a case study them when this is more of a look into the future uh, of what we could do. Mm -hmm. uh, so to start with with Ethereum. Um, as you probably already know, Ethereum is a is a tra is transparent by design, so everything is there for you to to see and to, to grab. And this information is available. I, 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 sorry to interrupt, but I, I think I mean I don't think we have to explain w what what Ethereum is, but maybe in 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 a, in a brief brief summary for anybody that has not has no understanding what it is, Ethereum is is a cryptocurrency. 
uh, is 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 set or similar to Bitcoin, I guess. Yeah, uh, Ethereum is, is actually a, a blockchain, and uh, yeah. then there is the cryptocurrency that is ETH. Uh, ah, okay. It's basically the the token that moves around in the in the blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, Ethereum is the the network of uh, computers that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so sorry about that. No, no, uh, that's good. Uh, I, I, I <laughs> sometimes I, I miss my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah, just to get to give a little background here and. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I totally forgot about that. I, I just assumed that everyone. Uh, it is. It's what... probably clear, and I just, I just. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Stating the obvious here, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no worries. Um, so as I was saying, uh, uh, this data is available for mainnet and also test nets. So it's, it's indifferent. And we have information for transactions, addresses like timestamps, fees, uh, who, who made the transfer and to whom, uh, the transfer value. We have also current balances. Uh, we have everything. Uh, some explorers, Etherscan, Etherchain, uh, and et cetera. Probably uh, Etherscan is the most known one. Not sure if you know it, uh, Alexander. I, I, I'm not uh, very much into uh, into okay. this whole topic, unfortunately. So I don't. So yeah, I, I can prepare, think. and oh, this is yeah. a, <laughs> <laughs> this is a screenshot. Uh, I also have the link open here. Uh, yeah. This is basically the address, and this is the address for our uh, company. Uh, it finium dot eth. This is basically. Uh, I just can. I can. Yeah, it is a little bit small. Yes, that's yeah. Better. Uh, Finium.eth, this is basically a ENS, Ethereum name service, just a curiosity, just like DNS works for normal uh, internet uh, web two things. Mm -hmm. uh, we can actually make the connection of between an address that's not actually easy to be remembered uh, to a name. Um, and yeah, we can see the balance in Ethereum, on Ether in this case. Um, the what amounts to, and then we can also see balance in other tokens. For example, uh, this has uh, uh, 1,800 USDC, and then we also have a couple of uh, um, NFTs. NFTs also show up here, so we basically know everything. We can also see the list of transactions. We have transaction hash, the method of basically the name of the thing, when it happened, the block, uh, uh, from the time and from and to who value in this case zero uh, and you can have uh, other things and you can also open the transaction hash and you are now exploring the transaction itself so you have even more information uh, for example this was a mint of a token and uh, yeah we can see the value because in mint this mint case of a token is 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 what exactly? Yeah, yeah, good question. So this is uh, basically creating NFTs out of a thin air. I would say <laughs> okay. uh, when you buy when you buy an NFT for from someone, you probably ever heard of uh, OpenSea. When you buy an NFT, it has already been minted, so the NFT already is exists. When NFT is minted, you are you are actually the one minting it on, mm -hmm. as the name says, on the blockchain. Okay. Um, and yeah, you also have a couple more information. You also see a preview here of the thing. Uh, so yeah, you have a lot of stuff on Etherscan. What's the, the problem with this? Coming here. Is that basically with all this information, you have to click everywhere to get somewhere else. For example, if you want to know where a transaction went to, you need to go there and see, oh, this is one, this went to here. And then if you want to go the next step, you need to search for that transaction and then click again. And when you actually look at it, you are completely lost in thousands of tabs. Uh, why, why is this necessary? Or why is this a problem? Uh, most of the times you actually don't need to, to see this because you just make a transfer and you assume that the transfer was correct or you interact with a smart contract what you buy an nft and you assume that the it's actually correct so you as already most people know there are a lot of scams and tentative scam <laughs> and this happened uh, to us at finium where um, um, someone claimed that um it was it was uh 
act after uh, using one of the smart contracts that we had developed for uh, for our client mm -hmm. uh, and it was requesting the money that uh, it had supposedly got stolen uh, we went through the transaction history all by hand looking we we lost a like a two hours or three hours of a morning looking through everything manually and we actually concluded that it was a tentative scam because uh at the time the the transactions were circular so the person that stole him was the one that funded him in the oh. first <laughs> okay yeah, yeah so we confronted him and um he, he never answered back so we assumed we were correct yeah i guess uh, so. at the time this was really painful but i redid the 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 thing with uh with the current explorer this is like a sneak peek of how we did how we how easy would it be and this is basically the wallet of the person claiming to have uh, been stolen and this uh, was the, the the robber per se mm -hmm. and basically as you can see this account had been funded so the the, the initial money it had had, had been uh, it had come from this one but yep. this one had received money from the one that actually uh, took the money from this so it was actually just a, a simple triangle of transactions yeah. i'm missing timestamps here but it it was basically uh, this one sent money to this one this to and then and then supposedly this one took the money from this so it doesn't make sense we actually asked him and he, he never answered back so yeah okay yeah and, yeah things are a tricky thing i mean this is this is I don't want to digress too much from the topic, but you know, when we when we when we talk with people and users, it's it's oftentimes that they, that especially financial institutes have have, have challenges with with finding fraud rings because it's they 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 operate within limits that are okay for for a financial institute. So so like I I transfer money to you, you transfer money to a friend, he transfers money to me, then we we are kind of in in, in operations of okay, this is a this is a normal behavior, and if the amounts are not too crazy, then it's it's probably fine. But then, when when I um, when when we the three of us are kind of like known, we we know each other, and and then I say, okay, I've been I've been robbed, and somebody stole this money from me. Then, but in in F, in essence, it's it's you you got the money from me because I you know, we agreed to do this. It's sometimes very hard to find out these these kinds of processes if you don't have. The, the, yeah, the, the, exactly. So you, if you had been smarter, probably and using another extra uh, two or three steps in the way. It yeah. would be a lot harder to actually like, discover it, uh, even doing this by hand, because at the time we did it uh, by hand. Uh, so yeah, and, and you can see here, basically everything is a triangle. Uh, this is a, a simple query to detect cycles uh, with a small network. And this is uh, just all the same models operandi is basically uh, doing the same triangle uh, uh, of moving money. So yeah, uh, I think, this is a uh, this is also was also possible because he actually claimed to be to be robbed so if he hadn't said anything this would be just a normal transaction like any no. any other um so yeah continuing also why this is important we have a couple of real world applications basically elliptic trm uh, and also breadcrumbs they are slightly different between themselves elliptic and trm probably um, bought a, a bit more similar and they actually provide blockchain analytics uh certifications they actually do aml stuff for transactions you can actually as you do kyc with a customer when you're actually registering for something they can do kyt know your transaction and uh, where you actually validate if a transaction is risky or not in the sense that where did the, the funds come from? They can also evaluate the risk of a wallet. Uh, yeah, a bit more and a lot more complex of what I do. Uh, mm -hmm. They are a real company, uh, etc. Uh, but yeah, the idea is that. And they also, I also have here a, a small example of a thing that happened in the past. Not sure if you heard of a, a major uh, downfall of a blockchain called Terra. But basically, they all they had all this money as a reserve to fund if things went down the drain. Mm -hmm. uh, but the money didn't actually uh, 
save uh, anything and they posted a blog post where they also using graphs traced the the money flow and where it went to actually basically someone withdraw the money somewhere uh, i don't um, remember uh, now the values but yeah the money wasn't enough to actually make the thing uh, also basically this was also i can say that it wasn't uh, we just wanted to see uh, where things went basically we wanted to know where this where is this money uh, going to uh, with this um, person that bought this nft for a tremendous amount of time uh, for uh, amount of money mm -hmm. we just wanted to put our private uh, inspector ads and <laughs> look at stuff yeah yeah that was one of the reasons um so the idea is as a is been understanding uh, it was to actually implement something that we could pass an address that we wanted to explore or build a network for uh, and basically looking at the list of transactions for that address build the network and going uh, from there basically um, going through the the, the old graph mm -hmm. um, so technology is used in this project specific so i start with with elixir is basically the language that I like the most uh, also has a lot of advantages for um, doing concurrent uh, stuff so we can actually spawn processes to inspect or explore different addresses so we can have uh, different things happening at the same time then as I said Neo4j the, the, the reason is that already as a, a graph like structure so if I'm sending money to you or sending main, some money to someone and I want to see the network it's basically a graph and neo4j is that and it also has everything for um um actually visualizing at the time i didn't know about rdb and also bloom so it was um uh, also a great opportunity to test that out and visualize stuff very quickly and i didn't even had to to lose time in per se, in, while developing a front-end or whatever, because Neo4j already uh, did that for me to visualize and query query things. So that was a, a, a big plus. And also, this is just a, a Block Scout API. So basically, Block Scout is one of the, the Ethereum explorers, but it has a different that it has a, a, a free API instead of, for example, Etherscan that has a a more complete API, but it's it gets expensive uh, really ah, fast. Okay. Um, and yeah, at the time this was uh, actually a proper solution, so yep, we, sure. we went with it. Yeah. Um, so I can call this uh, graph schemas because they are in the sense of the schema. I didn't use the the, the function that Neo4j provides to actually generate them. This is like an higher uh, abstraction level. Um, and this is how we could represent Ethereum uh, if we follow its current structure. Because mm -hmm. Ethereum, uh, the structure of it is it's not um, by by user or by wallet uh, with transfer. So you don't you can you can search for a user uh, for a wallet and get all transactions that that wallet or others did. Everything is done. Everything is under a block. So a block contains transactions. Transactions have internal transactions. I'll talk about it uh, in a sec. And this can be transactions to uh, smart contracts uh, or normal uh, user wallets. Uh, uh -huh. And then lock as the next lock. This isn't the way we want things to look at because we want to just know uh, me directly to you. Uh, does it make sense? Uh, in the sense that we want to have the network visualizing it directly and not mm -hmm. having the blocks and etc. Uh, does it make sense for now? Why? I it's... think it, yeah, 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 makes absolute sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the the next step was basically, and it's how how we have it. Um, it's it's the interaction directly. So assuming that I am this one and you are this one. Uh, and this is a smart contract that we we interact to. Mm -hmm. We just have a, a direct relationship. But basically, APIs get expensive really fast. Uh, 
or services that actually provide this uh, exploring stuff get expensive really fast because as you know ethereum is uh, in the scale of the terabytes now instead um, in, in the case of data yeah uh, you actually need to index everything in the way it is like blocks of transactions and then move everything to a, a wallet an address as transactions mm -hmm. uh, basically need to duplicate stuff and then this one needs to keep indexing stuff the first one and then moving the things to the new one so it gets messy pretty quick so that's why at the moment we are using a third party api we are still making the move to use our own uh, indexer mm -hmm. but yeah as i said there's a lot of of quirks for example you if you want to start exploring in this sense you need to specify a block that you want to start with so blocks are sequential so one two three four uh, mm -hmm. and if you want to for example the first five transactions that you did you don't know which block you want to start with because I don't know if you made the transaction five years ago and then you made the four last four yesterday and it's difficult uh -huh. to juggle with the values that you want to start exploring okay. yeah. so to catch everything you basically would need to start exploring from from the beginning basically because you lose a lot of information yeah you yeah, lose the time the time um yeah um, um... the time the uh, basis that's exactly that, right? yeah um, so this is what we could do in the future. Uh, and it was if we added uh, internal transactions. What are tra the internal transactions? I, I have a, a, a small example. It's, uh, I think it's easy to understand. Imagine that I uh, interact with a smart contract that's a splitter. Well, let's call it the splitter. W what is that? Instead of me sending money to you and money to another person in two different transactions, I would need to pay uh, gas, that's basically fees, twice. One to send to you and the other for the second one. So we could have a smart contract that would basically pick the, the money that I send, the full money, and then it splits to you and the, the, the other person. Not sure if it makes sense for now. Um, imagine I would be this one, and we would be this and uh, a, third a third third person here. I make a single transaction to this smart contract. So I'll send uh, 10 uh, ETH and I want to send five to each other. Internal transactions would be created out of the first one. So I interact with the smart contract and the smart contract would create okay. yeah. these two internal transactions uh, sending uh, each on one of these wallets, the okay. yeah. it's money. Uh, make, makes sense, right? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So cool. it's like if you if you split split uh, the, let's say you you go to a restaurant and split the bill with your friends. It's like uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, one pays and one someone. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is also atomic. Uh, for example, one of these can't happen if the others don't. Uh, all those sort of things. Uh, so yeah, we don't have this now because of this. Uh, this is the base idea and uh, the base idea is to actually pass the address that we want to explore. Uh, the API that BoxCal provides is GraphQL, uh, mm -hmm. but I think this is still uh, easily understandable. And we request 22 transactions where it comes with the hash, basically the transaction hash, because each transaction has a unique IV, let's call it that. Uh, the to and from addresses, the value that was sent, and the status because it could be reverted or passed, uh, that sort of things. Sorry. Um, why 22? Uh, and why not internal transactions? <laughs> Basically, as the service is free, you have a limit of complexity oh, okay. of the thing that you need to actually request. So. 22 is the maximum number of transactions we can request with this information. And if we wanted to request internal transactions, this number would be reduced to like one or two. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would lose the, 
the way of doing this. Yeah, this. it would not be as interesting anymore, I guess. Yeah, yeah and yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's 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 yeah. If if like you said, I mean, it's 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 getting complex and and very very large quickly. So if you really want to, um, you know, get the whole <laughs> the, the transactions, yeah, the whole, you couldn't. The, yeah, you couldn't exactly. You would have to copy basically all of it, and that that's a huge. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, as you can see, uh, this image, uh, the, we have we start with address one, this, and we get transactions to or from. We don't know because the API uh, doesn't differentiate if you are in the to or from uh, address. Oh, okay. So all of the transactions come, and we will explore the ones that uh, you are not. So basically, assuming you you received two or from others two, three, four, whatever, and and we do this. Uh, and basically, the advantage of Elixir here is that we can spawn different processes doing this uh, and uh, transactions at the same time, and then the uh, the end squared to uh, something uh, processes running at the same time. As you know, this grows exponentially because you start with with uh, twenty two transactions. The next uh, level, you have twenty two times twenty uh, it, times. Yeah, 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to take down the service. Uh, basically, doing a denial of no. service, uh, <laughs> having thousands of requests. So we mitigated this, having a pool size. So we control that only X. Uh, number of processes are running at the same time and we put things into a queue and when the queue gets um, gets free others uh, start being explored so okay. that way we don't uh, flood anyone with uh, with bad requests yeah. and yeah this would go up into a, a, a certain depth um, now Looking at our case study, I also brought another uh, scam <laughs> because they are easier <laughs> to, to be a, uh, yeah. A regular thing. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm making things look good here, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they are the easiest ones to actually visualize yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, things. This is basically um, um, someone got into the Discord of uh, Yuga Labs. They are the ones that develop board apes, uh, the ones that are most mostly famous, I think. Uh, Michael and, and I we did on... a, um, yeah, sure. a V4J live stream on uh, on these um, some uh, some months ago. I'll, I'll post a link in chat if I find the, okay, the cool. link to it. Yeah, yeah. We did, uh, we did some yeah, analysis yeah. On, on NFTs, on transactions, and all of that. So that was a that was a fun. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, I'll see that one also. <laughs> um, and yeah, someone got access to to Discord and uh, through a various of other things, they actually got to to uh, stole uh, got stole this this amount of uh, ETH at the time, and this was like uh, one hundred and fifty ETH. Uh, let's say it was two K. Uh, USD, uh, you can see that mm. it was probably 300k uh, that would be easily um, swapped to fiat currencies. Fiat currencies are basically dollars, euros. Uh, yep. And we, the plan is to actually, can we know where this money went to? Uh, mm -hmm. And this is what we are going to find out. Um, uh, this is also the link to my to my repo, if someone has interest to also test it out, uh, we have uh, doc Docker set. Oops, sorry. We have a Docker setup, uh, and it, someone can test that out locally without uh, going with uh, with extra things. And uh, yeah, going here. So also, yeah, this is the in the repo. Uh, we have instructions here to run if you want to run with Docker or if you want to actually set up. Uh, a new 4J database in ORDB or somewhere else, 
and then if you want to actually run the Docker or the okay, server. Can you zoom, zoom in a little bit here? Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay, this. Uh, it has the setup and also how to run, what you actually need to, to do. Uh, and yeah, basically, I'll, I'll jump just to into the code a bit because I wanted to show another thing. Uh, maybe put this bigger. Uh, and this is the way we actually create stuff. Uh, it has a lot of merges because uh, we don't know when an, an address has been created or not because things can happen in different orders. We don't have a sense of ordering. Uh, so we start by creating, um, it's actually a merge because we don't know if the current address already exists because we know we are exploring this address, the specific address, but we don't know if it already been created in a previous relationship. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, because you do the the like you like you showed earlier, right? The address uh, one, and then um, yeah, the, the, the uh, transactions within. So I could be here, uh, to this example. Imagine that we already explored this one, and we know, uh, for example, this one that's uh, in in common with with this. And when we are actually exploring this one, we already knew it. So. There, there is a chance that sometimes you you are exploring some address, but it already exists because it was created through another uh, transaction or relationship. Um, and then we also set the the node label to this is with uh, curly braces because this gets replaced with the actual value then after. Uh, so basically, we set the the label to the label that we know. Uh, for example, if it's a normal account, a normal address, or we set it as an account. But if it's a smart contract, we set it as a smart contract. And due to limitations also here, we only know if it's a smart contract uh, in the actual uh, address we are exploring. We don't know if this to or from is a smart contract. So we start everything without matching its type, its label. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we we merge uh, also the to and from and set a DNS name. So we also we also store the names of that people actually can buy. It, DNS is an NFT, so you buy that name like a normal. Um, um, what like you buy a domain, mm -hmm. uh, for example. So yep. the same way, and basically this way, if uh, we run a second time or a third time, if in the meantime someone has changed names, it it gets updated because you can do that. You can sell your domain, uh, you can buy a new one, uh, mm -hmm. those kind of things. And also we create the transaction, or if they if for some reason it gets uh, repeated because you can actually get into a circle. Uh, we have some ways to mitigate that, but if I send a transaction to you, I send you money and you send money to person A, and if person A also interacts with me, I shouldn't explore you again uh, because I already uh, know your address. Hmm. So transactions could get repeated in the exploring part. So we just match them with the hash because it's always unique and also the value, and we set the status. Uh, why we set the status? Because when I actually discover a transaction, it could be pending, and that doesn't mean that it, that it didn't got through or it didn't fail, and the next time it can already have a new, a new status. So yeah, I wanted to, to reference this. We also have uh, indexes for uh, for uh, Ethereum addresses because there is the thing that we actually uh, do the merge with. Uh, also for hash in transactions and uh, and yeah so before we actually try stuff out I just wanted to show uh, here as you see I'm using Neo4j or ADB and this is basically a network that I wanted to to show here uh, uh, with the actual scammers uh, of that thing I this is the initial uh, token initial address we started uh, 
through it and then we explore out of oh, okay okay so you this this is the initial um the the, the scammed token basically and then you you follow the path from uh, from here kind of from there okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, as you can see in the middle it's where it, most things are uh um confused because there are a lot of relationship mm -hmm. and the more the depth we, we we spread out there aren't interactions with this because this was the last uh, it was the leaf of uh, of the tree per se this isn't the tree but uh it's the the last item that you can't actually yeah. connect uh, stuff so you are, you always have this uh looking of a uh, of a tree if you cut things here yeah um and yeah we have accounts at yellow basically normal addresses that just hold the balance and interact with smart contracts smart contracts are the things that are running in the blockchain and you can buy uh buy nfts and etc uh so here uh, we have a pretty huge network it doesn't get easy to actually explore this way but i wanted to show it anyway for example in red here we have transactions that failed uh for some reason um okay. and in green we have uh, transaction that status was okay and for example these ones don't have any color because the status is pending basically uh, oh, I see. Okay. If I had run this again, probably this would have uh, already have a status. Uh, and yeah, we we see a lot of stuff here. And if we zoom out, zoom in, we we see that it shows DNS names instead of actually uh, showing. For example, if you come here, sorry, and then show the Ethereum address, you can see that you lose a lot uh -huh. of readability uh because of yes. all of these <laughs> that's true yeah. yeah yeah so yeah uh what i wanted to show also was uh actually here let me check if i haven't lost it yeah so just a sec and uh, i have a couple of queries that i think they are uh cool to understand and mm -hmm. the first one is uh detecting cycles between nodes basically the query that i used to show the first image of and that guy that actually got the money uh, moving around uh, in this one as the network is pretty big we don't get uh, so let's put this bigger we don't get uh, that much information we just know that this is the first one the initial one that it's also an account okay uh, and uh, we just know that there is a path from this uh, and we have all everything connected and, and cycle here uh, this doesn't give us uh, much information in this case and we want to discover where the money went to in the other case uh, it, it was uh, more helpful so we can also what, what, sorry uh, one question maybe i don't know if, if you can answer that but the yeah. It, it follows the um that the path from the initial re, um, transaction down down there is the, the the orange one w what's the involvement of these of these un disconnected ones on the left hand side where they have yeah. transactions going yeah. between um, uh, but not with the not not at least not visible maybe it's not shown i don't know no no the, no no the query doesn't do that actually we don't start with uh, with the initial one in this case we we just are looking for random uh, cycles so we detect all cycles where the status uh, is okay. Ah, um, okay, okay. Because okay. it could show, yeah, it could show other interesting things because sometimes we are look, we we think we want to look uh, at somewhere and we are losing uh, extra uh, yeah. things happening. I uh, see, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I think we, I am not a great detective, <laughs> so <laughs> well, I mean, to spread out my my yeah. um, my sense of uh, viewing things. Uh, but yeah, that's actually a good question, and I'm not taking into attention this. Okay. Uh, yeah. In this case, uh, so yeah. Um, then uh, after basically searching for um, things manually, I found. Uh, tornado cash laying around here what is tornado cash not sure if you heard of it in the news or 
No, no? not really, to be honest. Okay. So basically, Tornado Cash is um, is is or was I don't know anymore uh, a smart <laughs> contract. <laughs> yeah, that people could interact with and uh, actually. B- I could in- send their money to Tornado Cash. It was a smart contract. I sent money there. And then you could withdraw my- the money from there that I sent without tracing it back to me. Um, ah, okay. So okay. You-, you can see already see the issues here and that uh, yeah. potentially <laughs> arise <laughs> from this. Uh, and it's technically, uh, or at least mathematically, uh, using zero knowledge proofs, all that uh, sort of things. Um, and basically, some time ago, I would say two months, I think it got sanctioned because a lot of people used it to actually launder oh, money. Yeah, I mean, uh, streams exploit, exploit, yeah. exploit to me. <laughs> exactly. Um, some people actually use it for a legitimate. Uh, of course, stuff. yeah, yeah, always. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But but yeah, there was always this case. So when I actually found out uh, there are others here, I went directly searching for uh, for him. Um, and if you wanted to, I, I said was, because now you can't actually interact with their front end. They had the front end where we could interact with. They don't have that anymore. Uh, but the smart contract, as this is blockchain and it's all distributed, etc., it's still running because of course. Yeah. you can't actually take that down. Um, and yeah, if I look for the path, uh, from the actual scammer's address to Tornado Cash, where uh, the status is okay and the Ethereum value is higher than zero, we actually get uh, a pretty interesting uh, path. So I'm putting this bigger here. We can see that here he withdraws 42 ETH. So I'll put this bigger. Not sure if I, can you see here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, is it, if you can see here. Oh yeah, here we go. Yes, I see. Yeah, forty-two. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So forty-two here in this case five, in this case one hundred and one, and then uh, f- uh, also four or five, five and yeah. one. And one. if you get back to actually the the image that we had, and this image was posted by someone uh, also uncovering this on um on um on twitter mm-hmm. we see that we see found exactly same values yes okay cool yeah, same value. <laughs> exactly yeah. and if we follow down the the path of the money every single of it ends up in tornado cash so we have 10 here 10 here one and we you you don't see uh, the 40 or uh, the random values because you could only interact with a set a specific set of values with tornado cash you couldn't send f- uh, five or 25 because you could only send uh 10 or one or 100 i think because oh, okay. imagine if i sent you like a really specific number uh 5.43 if we then with we, you withdraw 5.3043 it would be possible to get the trace back to yeah, yeah of course to the but value if everyone if deposits the same yeah. amount of value and yeah. you don't also have an, an another way to actually get a, around with it you don't yeah. know who's then that is uh, they, they they were ready for this i mean don't tell me this was not <laughs> was not planned from the from the beginning i mean yeah i don't want to uh, go yeah. into <laughs> no no i i don't want to either but it's like it's, yeah. it's really, i mean it seems like okay well let's make it as 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 standardized as possible so that nobody can really follow up the 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 actual transactions because if you if you if you like you just said if you if you take a, an, a specific value you can follow the value but if everybody has the same value then uh, there's no point in, in that information you don't have a way to actually find out yeah. um so yeah every single value of it if you end up looking at it ended up here and then you completely lose track of this so there isn't way to actually know now where the money is because yeah. it ended it up bank here. account or they're in their bank account, I guess. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, um, since the, the 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 smart contract got sanctioned, some 
wallets that interacted with it got also sanctioned. So they went into a, a blocked list per se. Uh, so some of them uh, probably are locked and they can't do uh, much things with um, with the money uh, now, but I don't know how, how, how that went. So yeah, I see a question here, not 22 here. Yeah, so uh, in this case, it, it's, uh, I, I'm assuming you are tw actually asking about the 22 transactions. So it was 22 for this, 22 for this, and 22 for this one. So it, it's actually more than, than 22 because each node had up to 22 transactions. Not so sure if uh, this was the question. Uh, if if it if it was not, then uh, Tony um, add add a little bit more details. But I think yeah, probably that 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 might have been it. Um, because under, under, I mean, this is just a drill down. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we start exploring I, uh, in this one, and then exactly. uh, each I mean, time you, we, you could potentially click on 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 some other node and yeah. see if there are other other uh, other. Um, yeah, you see exactly uh, two yeah, more yeah. that were not really relevant for this specific query and for this specific thing, but they they are they are in the database and uh... exactly yeah yeah I I yeah this one also has more uh, the actual initial, but uh, in this case the money doesn't leave and doesn't leave anywhere, and as you can see it's a zero zero value transaction. So okay, uh, so it doesn't it was not interesting for us either. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then also we have, um, we can see, uh, this doesn't have a proper name, at least I don't have a proper name for this, but I would like to call this the, the support tree. Uh, basically, I think it was what you were, were asking before. And you start, we start with, uh, in this address and we go, we spread out and see from this address, yes. where can I connect to, mm -hmm. uh, also looking at uh, status okay. And uh, in this case, I discarded the value because I really wanted to know from this specific node, where can I get to? And this is okay. basically the way to actually discover the the next thing. In this case, uh, not all of them are being shown because it's a pretty uh, support uh, yeah, I, I guess I mean this is maybe something for rather for Bloom than for for the browser yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, the browser is is not is not meant to handle like a huge number of of of, of nodes to visualize yeah. it. So in this case, we it also it doesn't provide much information. So I no, just, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just uh, went with okay, uh, and then I have the last query. It's basically. Can I find a way between the scammer's address and our uh, company's account? Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> is there a, is there a way? And uh, yeah, we can we can run this. So we can do pin server to actually kickstart everything. Just hide this, and then we can do. Um, by the way, I call this ETH Cool Poirot because of the, the name of the inspector. Uh, <laughs> <Very> <laughs> I, I haven't talked about it yet, but <laughs> so network explorer and then explore the address we want to explore and we can um, copy here our address. It's basically the Finium's address mm -hmm. and we paste it and then we can specify a depth. So the depths of exploring, I'll just set two because uh, otherwise it takes a huge amount of time. As you can understand, it's 22 transactions, then 22 times 22, and then 10. Yeah, yeah it gets you this is to do the, well, the craziness and the difficultiness and the, you know, the, the things to understand is this with expansion and exponentiality, it gets. Yeah, yeah. It becomes a lot. Very, so very basically we have the logs here of what is querying and if it's already explored one address, it, it prints. So I already know this guy or this smart contract. So mm -hmm. I'm just leaving it here. In this case, for example, it's a null address. Not, not really sure, but it's the API that probably didn't index it correctly because it, it doesn't exist. You don't okay. have, uh, you can interact with the null address uh, in the sense of being the, the zero address. And it, it's where you actually destroy stuff, but in this case, uh, 
it, it isn't that one. Okay. Uh, so it's just a small detail. And yeah, yeah. this uh, goes goes on. Sometimes uh, transactions also fail when you request for them. For example, this could uh, belong to a smart contract that has rec it is receiving a lot of transactions even now. So the API can't actually uh, get them in time. So it just fails. Uh, and we handle that in a safe okay. way. Okay. So we keep we keep our way. And basically, this will finish when uh, we don't have any more addresses in queue. Uh, so basically, when we when we get to know an address, we put it in the queue. And if there isn't anything more in the queue, we we know it ended. So yeah, we have it here, fully explored. And if we can back to Bloom, for example. We can see that we now will have two initial ones uh, because the first one was the scammers and now uh, our Finium's address would also get marked as a, as an initial ah, one. Ah, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So we so had we have two. It should be this one here, I think. Uh, just let me change the text here. So not this one, probably the one above. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, that one here, come here. This is getting to be a bit slow because it's rearranging stuff now. Do you want to discard the other one? Yeah, uh, so yeah, it's, I just wanted to show that it yeah, shows okay. up with, uh, with the name, uh, with ENS name. So it's yeah. easy to actually understand it. But now we can actually come back here and see okay. if there is a path between uh, the others and and yeah, hopefully there isn't, and <laughs> it doesn't <Yeah>. exist. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we can also do the other way around and basically uh, swap this with this and check the same thing here and close it and running. So, no things uh, again. Yeah, I, I think you probably can also just change the the, the arrows yeah 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 yeah, yeah. exactly here. doing this one and uh, yeah. and removing this one exactly yeah um so yeah very cool uh so you see obviously you uh, you have been uh, not been scammed that's, that's good to know <laughs> <laughs> yeah um sometimes we also use it to uh to actually look at uh other other things uh, they are not important here uh but we sometimes just want to to know uh what's been happening so, uh continuing here just a, a last part it's basically a look into into the future because there is also a limitation when you actually interact with a smart contract you you don't know for example looking here um um, in this case, we know it's a smart contract. In this case, it's a, a tokens one. So we can actually buy tokens here uh, or swap tokens. Uh, and we don't know what what this person did. Uh, we just know that uh, it interacted with it. Ah, I see, because know. it has no value, but they, they did something with it. Not directly <laughs> Ethereum exchange, but more like uh, the transaction was for something else. Exactly. So, for example, if we come here, and this is in, in one a similar one where we interact with a smart contract, and in this case, we know that, uh, for example, click to see more. Uh, we have uh, other information here, input data, and what happened, etc. But looking at the the explorer itself, we don't have that information. I see. But there are. Other things called blockchain events in the Ethereum case, uh, I'm not sure if um, if uh, they um, they exist in other in other blockchains. To be honest, and a blockchain event uh, you can think of it uh, like a, a log. For example, you interact with uh, with a smart contract and you do you buy an NFT, and if the buy is su successfully happens. Uh, a blockchain event is triggered and it, it happens like a uh, it's a log saying that Alexander bought this NFT uh, for 
X amount of ETH, for example, and you keep that register, but there isn't a way to actually query that register in the direct way, this the same way that we are looking at other scan in this case. Yeah. But then there is a service called the graph. Uh, just out of curiosity, the graph, uh, you can build GraphQL, um, GraphQL um, subgraphs. And basically, you just explain how your blockchain events in your smart contract work. And then you can, uh, you have, have basically an API built for them automatically. Uh, and a lot of services, known services, have this. For example, uh, I don't know if you know Uniswap, it's a decentralized exchange. Uh, even ENS has their their uh, own subgraph. It's basically where I'm getting the names from. So each time I get an address, I query this subgraph asking, so give me the name for this address. And you can actually build subgraphs for other services and you can use each other services. And basically, okay. yeah. if we think of mixing this information with the, the transactions information, we could build like a full blueprint of everything that's happening. In this case, for example, we can see uh, NFT sales uh, on Disrupt. Disrupt is, um, is a NFT marketplace that we built some time ago uh, for a client at Finium. Um, and, um, yeah, basically people, and there was, um, the client selected, um, uh, artists to actually post there. So it wasn't, um, okay. yep. it wasn't like open sea where everyone can mint a weird stuff. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, people would be selected there and then everyone could buy uh, artists uh, NFT. And in this case, for example, we know that I w interacted with Disrupt smart contract, but you just know that I did stuff there. You wouldn't know if uh, it was a sale, if it was uh, a listing, uh, something like that. So yep. in this case, I, I swapped the API. I used a different API, uh, Im implemented a different one, and uh, I explored the NFT sales and we can see three di different clusters here. Basically, these were pretty huge sales for these specific sellers. Uh, and the others, as this was a bit more a uh, tiny market in the sense that you just posted there, you just sold there one or two NFTs that you actually did. Uh, there were smaller ones. Um, and imagine this at the same time with the transaction. So you could know that I interacted with a smart contract, but at the same time, I will also have the information that it, was, that it was an NFT sale because we can plug and play different APIs from services oh, yeah, like yeah. And yeah. as it is all no SQL. Then you have more and more information that for the other service is not available and you can you, you connect these together exactly. and then you see, okay, actually I know this is, is okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the idea up there uh, pretty far away is to actually use this as a tooling service uh, where you just implement the specific API that we want you want to explore and this project uh, spins you up with the network and if you want to explore different services at the same time and then put them together with a merge you just build the different apis and then you specify which api you want to run okay and then you have everything meshed together and yeah. you can get your conclusions the way you you wanted to yeah so. depending on what what you are exactly like you just said depending on what you what you want to see, what you want to discover, what you want to learn, you you pick a different set, and then sometimes it's interesting to know, okay, what is the actual content of the transaction? Sometimes it just doesn't matter, so you don't have to have this this level of detail. And sometimes it's important to get more, yeah, um, more the, down to the. To the we core. can also have different uh, different node labels, uh, different transaction types, uh, and then we can build the information the way we we want to. So that's the the final goal, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah and uh yeah that's pretty much this um 
super okay. cool. Uh, th this was great. Thank you very much, uh, Diogo. This is, uh, I think, this was very interesting. Uh, uh, especially, if, you know, hunting hunting scammers is always fun, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and and finding this out, it's, it's going to be more difficult. Uh, I hope I hope for scammers. So I think that's 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 a good good thing. Um, I shared the link uh, to the GitHub repository in, in chat, and I will put it in the video description on YouTube as well, so everybody can can try it out and and, and give give it a, a spin themselves. I, I, I guess this has just come to mind, but I, 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 maybe you can answer this. It's potentially, uh, this is this is linked or this is directly connected with Ethereum. Could you could you try this with other? Would this technically work with other? blockchains yeah. as well yeah. like like uh, bitcoin and others or or is it is it kind of very hard hard to move it over to others um yeah it, it could actually work because uh, as i said the idea and it's actually being built in this way uh apis are pl plug and play so you implement you have a behavior or an interface if you are more uh, familiar with java uh and then you need to implement that interface and uh Basically, if there is a service that provides uh, an, API, an API for block for Bitcoin, or even you implement your own um, because you have it for some other reason, you could actually just implement that interface or behavior in in this project, and then uh, it would actually work. Yes. Cool. You probably need to change some names because of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not like, it's not it's as... value. Uh, yeah. Probably just value. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. Now that you asked that, um, and now that I was talking about interfaces and behaviors, uh, I did this in Elixir. Uh, I'm now doing uh, like a, a pulling my. I don't know how to say this in English because we have a, a saying in Portuguese, but. Uh, Elix and the Elixir uh, inter interaction with with Neo 4 j we don't have a like a official uh, library. It's a or... Yeah, it's a community driver. Um, that's yeah, what, what there exactly. Is. Yes, uh, yeah. I think I'm not sure if uh, the person that did it is is uh, actually seeing this, but yeah, I need to to thank it because it's uh, actually without it, I wouldn't be able to to do this. Uh, but yeah, it has some limitations uh, because. The project already exists for for some time, um, and um, yeah, it, it's getting a bit out of um, um, out of date in the sense. So, not sure if you guys want to actually start implementing a official Elixir uh, package uh, <laughs> someday. Well, uh, maybe I, I I'm not I'm not at the the right position to say uh, to 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 be honest. Yeah, uh, I'm just. <laughs> but but just uh, but potentially, I mean. I, I don't know. I hope we can we can at least make it make it work, so uh, so that it stays uh, um, working as much as possible. Um, so uh, I think I on the page I, I linked this earlier, but I, I um, to the to the developer page on El, uh, Erlang and Elixir, I think they are kind of connected. Um, yeah. There is Flori Patras Patrascu yeah. who is the who is the the one that developed both of these. So um, hopefully he, he can um, can make an update for for current versions. Um, otherwise, um, yeah. I, so... I left a, a PR and also an issue. Oh, good. Not, okay. not sure if he's he's looking at it because he didn't say anything. No, uh, okay. So yeah. uh, I'm not really sure, but yeah, I'm just I'm just saying in the way of trying to pull pull things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, no, it's great. I, I mean, if, yeah, uh, and the language is also being used for a, a lot of. Uh, Data science now, uh, similar like Python. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, it could be a great addition. Uh, it's a, a niche language, I think. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, it like you said, I mean, it's it's it has its relevancy, and I guess it's it's important. Obviously, yes. I mean, uh, it's not it's not one of the to the top five languages, but but still. Um, yeah. Who knows? Uh, I maybe was just going out this. There, looking if <laughs> yeah 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 maybe Florent watches this and uh, and 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 uh, thinks to do uh, another edition of his um, uh, of his driver or if somebody else watches this and also is is very versed in Neo4j and El uh, Elixir and maybe you wanna uh, you know write write an update to the to the driver you know it's uh, more than welcome to do that yeah um, cool so yeah I'm not sure if anyone is uh 
as any questions if we have any questions in chat i don't see any uh, people people are are uh, are happy thank you for a nice presentation kakim uh, thank, thank you. you for watching mark also says a very interesting thanks so tony obrigado uh, de nada de nada exactly thank you <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, yeah uh, I, I think that, that 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 wraps us up for for today um Thank you, uh, Diogo, again. Thank you for taking the time and for presenting. This was really for interesting. Having me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, everybody else, um, register for notes. Um, we uh, have a little uh, break week next week, so uh, no, no regular live streams next week. Um, but we will be back the week after. Uh, so uh, I'll see you then. Uh, have a good rest of your day and stay safe, everybody. Bye. Yeah. See you. Have a nice one. Bye. Bye.